I like to think that each and every one of us have our own story, a book of life in which we are the main character. This book is made up of many chapters and throughout the novel that is life, we will encounter a bevy of different characters, experience new settings, encounter problems and hopefully find the solutions so that we can live happily ever after. There will be highs and lows, there will be times of happiness and of sadness. There will be times where the story gets a little boring and times where it's so excitingly fast paced that we can barely keep up. For the year 13s in this room, today, a little tearfully, we will turn the page on one of the biggest and most important chapters of our lives. Almost half of my story to date has been set in a beautiful school on top of a hill and my time here has seen some exponential growth in my character. From an 11 year old girl from a small country school who started Woodford taller than her year 13 buddy, with an untouched dress shirt or a fully buttoned day shirt, to the 17 year old girl standing before you, still taller than her year 13 buddies, but who has hopefully got a better handle on the uniform. Woodford's impact on my life and the direction it will take is a defining aspect of my character. In a short while, I will leave this gym with 34 of my closest comrades, but I think that no matter how much time passes from this moment, we will always be Woodford girls through and through. Woodford has prepared us for the pages not yet written. We know that if it's sausage rolls for sticky, you'd better run. Getting a spot by the heater in chapel in the middle of winter is ideal. Junior socials are a heck of a lot better with earplugs and Mr Simmons has a never ending supply of life of pie puns. Thus all the important life lessons are learned. Truly though, Woodford has been the best start of our stories and I know that the people we have grown into because of being here will set us up for success and happiness across disciplines and across the globe. Woodford has not only equipped us with knowledge that will help us go anywhere we want to go, but the culture at the school and the special people who inhabit it have developed young women who will go forth and get the job done, all with a positive and humble attitude. I must use this time to thank some of the characters to whom I owe a lot of my story and personal sanity to. To the prefects who have been the most incredible team I have ever, could have ever wished for, from managing their own roles with kindness and efficiency, making sure that I didn't explode in times of stress, and dancing it out to some good old Bon Jovi and high school musical hits up on stage. To all of the year 13s, we are the smallest year group that Woodford's seen in a long while, but you have more than made up for it with your enthusiasm and willingness to help out. I could not think of a better group to have helped me lead the school, and I am grateful to each and every one of you for making my job as easy as possible. For many of us, next year will be the first in seven years that we will not be seeing each other every day. But it is an exciting time, for I know that each and every single one of you are going on to do bigger and better things. To Mrs Peterson, Mrs Russell and Mrs Redpath, I think Anna and I have spent more time in your offices combined than anywhere else in the school, and I wouldn't have had it any other way. Thank you for always being there in times of crisis. To Miss Russell for being our chocolate fish and lolly dealer and to you all for being so open-minded and hard-working, helping us to achieve what we wanted to, while also being an inspiring leadership team that Woodford is very lucky to be in the hands of. To my deputy Anna, who deserves a special mention of her own, Anna has been my right-hand woman through thick and thin, and I truly would not have made it through this year without her. Even despite the fact that half my life has been spent waiting for her to get her books out of her locker, and the late night, three hour long FaceTime calls that annoy both sets of parents. We've been pretty much joined at the hip and she's not only been the best deputy I could have ever wished for, but has become one of my closest friends. I truly don't know how I'm gonna manage next year when we're at different ends of the country. To my family for being constantly supportive, but then also being kind enough to ensure that there was no way in a million years that I would let it all get to my head. To my little sisters, Jess and Rachel, who have had to deal with their annoying big sis up on stage in every assembly and chapel and important event without too many complaints. To my parents who have listened to my complaining and stress meltdowns at home and have put up with me through it all. Thank you for all that you have done and all that you have sacrificed for me. 
There are so many other people that I need to thank, but I realise that the longer I speak, the longer it is until you begin your holidays, so I'll try to, to track you down later. While I've talked about my personal story to date, what I'm trying to get at is that if we've all got a book that represents our journey through life, I think the most important question that we must ask ourselves is not what would anyone else want to read it, it is whether we ourselves would want to read it. When you look back on your life, will you be proud of the one that you have led? I challenge everyone in this room to make your story the most exciting and meaningful one it can be and not to let anyone else dictate how you live your life. You are the main character. You are a smart, sensible, practical, brave, beautiful and incredible as you want to be. So make it count and make your story the one that wins the Man Booker Prize, Pulitzer Prize or the Oscar. To next year's leaders and head girl, I know that you will do a fantastic job and will lead an incredible school and make 2018 a wonderful chapter in Woodford's story. For the leaving 35, the rest of our story is just beginning and I know that you will continue to cherish the past, embrace the present and challenge the future every day in your own special way. So as I wind up and leave you with the challenge of living a story that you'd love to read, I will finish with an extract from one of my favourite childhood stories and one that I hope will continue to inspire both my and your journeys for years to come. Congratulations, today is your day. You're off to great places, you're off and away. You have brains in your head, you have feet in your shoes, you can steer yourself in whatever direction you choose. You're on your own and you know what you know and you are the girl who decide where to go. Today is your day, your mountain is waiting, so get on your way.